on the bench today and the focus of this video is going to be my new or new old stock MXR Distortion Plus. Its manufacture date was around 79 slash 80 looking at the pot values similar to the manufacturing date of this guy. Made by MXR. This one is made in New York and this one is made by Dunlop here in the Bay Area. And what we're going to do is I converted this guy into a Distortion Plus. Clicking that switch down changes the high end filtering, uh, low end filtering, and then clicking this one puts the clipping diodes in. So it moves from being a preamp or a gain stage, a clean gain stage, to something with distortion. So I'd like to compare the waveforms of these guys and see what the difference is. This one had much higher gain than this one, and I thought, well, it would be fine, but we'll see. And then I also made this guy into a high voltage supply. So it's got a voltage boost circuit inside and 24 volt rails. So that's going to be a really good addition, I think, to this because this is a clipper. So it's always going to limit to around the forward voltage of the diodes, probably 600 millivolts peak to peak. And then this can lift it up higher. This can clean it up a bit. This is also got a high output voltage uh, sorry high voltage swing because this has got a voltage booster in it as well and I can use this to create a nice distortion that can feed a clean amp. Now originally with these pedals, uh, somebody like Randy Rhodes for example would take this, add uh, maybe the 10 band and then put it that into a JCM 800 and the combination of those three gain stages uh, would create a very pleasing distortion. And so what I'm trying to do here is use this guy with his high voltage rails to boost this, clean up the spectral components with this guy and we'll, we'll take a look at it all on the spectrum analyzer and make this a pedal set for more of a, a, a clean amp that I want to drive really hard. So let's start now by looking at the schematics for the Distortion Plus. We're on Electro Smash and this is the MXR Distortion Plus analysis and here's the schematic. So if we take a look at the schematic, this cap here C2 is going to define the higher frequencies. So this blocks the lower frequencies, so 10 nanofarads. And then this here defines the gain at certain frequencies. So this will this will block some DC I mean, this will block some low frequencies as well. The gain is by these two and this. So when this is up full blast at one meg, one meg divided by one meg roughly is going to be unity gain. So we can check that out. Well, we've got a 4.7K in the way as well. The distortion is caused by these clipping diodes. And then there's a little bit of filtering here. For this one nanofarad detects some of the edges off this filtering. And then it just goes straight to the output. So it's a, it's a very simple, simple design. If we go to the microamp, look at that schematic. Looks like identical bigger cap there so this lets more bass through gain is set by these guys so it's a different kind of gain stage so 500 into 56 uh, with this 2.7 as well and then some filtering here for the lower frequencies or, or how you handle gain with the lower frequencies and so the gain is not as much and of course there's no clipper and there is no volume. So it just goes through this very large cap here, which is gonna pass most of the guitar frequencies. A little bit of a voltage divider here and out it goes. And you can look at the links, but if we take a look at this guy, this MXR Distortion Plus that I made, uh, when I push this switch down, it changes this filter and this filter. And then when it's up, it's back in the microamp. And then when I put this switch down, it adds the clipping diodes and that capacitor that we just saw earlier into the output. And then the gain has not changed. The gain is basically 500K divided by 56 at full blast, well with the 2.7 as well. And so what I'd like to do first, I think, is get the Distortion Plus and this plugged in together and just have a look at how the waveforms differ, both in the time domain and the frequency domain, and uh, see how they compare. All right. Let's, uh, let's plug them into the scope. I've got both pedals hooked up. 300 millivolts going straight through. You can see it on the scope. Uh, I've set the gain down to zero on this one. Gain down to zero on this one. This volume is up full blast. Essentially this one is up full blast, but it doesn't have a volume. And so let me engage the micro amp. So you can see that we've got clipping. And as I turn up the gain, you know, the clipping clips more because we're feeding more voltage into those clipping diodes until they peak ultimately at about 600 millivolts peak to peak because they're germanium if I take the clipping out obviously signal just goes massive because it's got that very large power supply in but it compresses with the with the diodes the germanium diodes 300 volts forward voltage on each side so and that's what that looks like at peak gain This is the Distortion Plus now, so I'll turn the gain up. 
and it squares off. So it's driving those dials very, very hard at this point. So they're just switching on and off. And then there's a tiny little bit of filtering just so it doesn't become a fizzy, fizzy noise. I think if I pull it about there, say halfway-ish, and switch that one off and switch that one on. Yeah, they're reasonably comparable about halfway. So my modded distortion plus at one kilohertz, sorry, my modded microamp at one kilohertz uh, to try and emulate a distortion plus. Oh, well, that was both on at the same time. Is about the same if the gain is only on halfway. Uh, but once I crank this baby up, you can see it squares off pretty rapidly uh, to produce a very distorted distorted tone. I think that's why some people prefer to put uh, an equalizer on the end because that squareness is very noisy and very fizzy. So you want to get rid of some of those edges and make it more, you know, if you can make it into a shark fin, that's, that's a great sounding tone. Let's take a look at them both in terms of frequency response. I've got the spectrum analyzer plot hooked up. So top is time domain, bottom is frequency domain and we're generating a one kilohertz sine wave, which you can see here. So that is one kilohertz. Now, if we switch on the distortion plus, you can see some harmonics. So that's one kilohertz, that's three kilohertz, that's five, that's seven, and so on. So it's generating odd harmonics, and those odd harmonics are caused by the hard clipper. Now, if we turn up the, the gain here, which you can see is set to zero, and slowly etch it up and we start to overdrive the amp and if you remember in, when we were in the time domain it got very very square generating loads of harmonic components so now you can see we're adding even components so we get one at one kilohertz one at two kilohertz now one at three four etc and you can see those even components go up and down as I turn the gain up. So that's what we see or hear when we turn the gain up. So gain down, odd harmonics only. Gain up, it goes more and more square, generates more har harmonics and we get odd and even. So the odds are caused by the clippers and the evens caused by preamp gain. Now let's switch off this pedal, put this guy on, which is set in the distortion plus mode and you can see the gain is set to zero. So I turn that guy up and you can see we've got a few harmonics one odd here and one even something here in between if i turn it up so we're at halfway now you can see now we're driving the diode so the amplitude coming out of the op amp is higher than the amplitude or the forward voltage of the diodes so we begin to clip and we get those odd harmonics and we get up to a certain level and you can see we start to get a few evens but they're they're lower in amplitude and so let's do an experiment now and to put this one back on and just lower this down to about halfway. So I think that is about the gain profile, comparing this on full and this on half. So technically I should switch this to have much more gain. You know, I'd make sure that when I switch these in, I'm adding much more gain. So I get the clipping of the op amp combined with the clipping of the diode. So I get both those odd and even harmonics. And you can see the frequency roll off here. So I'm going to generate noise, which contains all frequencies. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to add a pedal that is similar in design to this, but has a filter on the output. So we can see what a filter would do to the signal. And then I'll also add in the six band IQ as well. And we can do some comparisons. I'm now generating a, a noise signal. Signal. And it goes up to here. This is a 10 kilohertz cutoff, and this is set by the speed of the scope of the scope acquisition. We're only interested up to about 10 kilohertz, anyhow. And here is the noise, so you can see it's totally random. And noise contains every frequency. There's different colors of noise. I'm just generating noise. It's a setting on the sig gen, but pink noise has a certain frequency response, and so on. Let me put the distortion plus on. Everything's up max. And um, let's observe this noise here it goes a lot more distorted. There's more edges in the signal. It's more switching on and off rapidly as opposed to gracefully transitioning from one voltage to another voltage. And that creates a lot of spectrum, a lot of spectral components. And you can see that uh, we're filling up the spectrum right through the bandpass. See that drops down when I turn it off. So this is a lot of fizz, a lot of noise. And that's why people like to use a graphic equalizer with it because you can, you know, turn the highs down and get rid of some of that fizz. So you can see I'm turning the highs down there. And you can also use a graphic equalizer to peak the mids as well. And we'll look at that in one second. So now let's compare that to 
the micro amp that's configured as as a distortion plus and it's it's average it's nowhere near as distorted and if you remember we're only doing odd harmonics with this because we just don't have enough gain coming out of the 741 chip they both share the same chip plus the fact is that it's got a 24 volt power rail so it's very hard to make this thing distorted so it's got distortion but it's i designed it more to drive something like a jcm 800 just a little harder creating that extra edge and if you check my video out for when i did the modification uh, you can see how how that's done now but this setup's different so let's switch this guy off and now let's switch this guy on so this is the rat which is essentially the same circuit diagram as a distortion plus but it has a filter on the output so you can get rid of some of the higher frequencies without using a graphic equalizer so let's switch it on and now you can see we filled out the spectrum here loads of noise but let me adjust the filter and you can see the higher frequency spectral components now dropping down quite significantly. You lo losing a good 10 dBs in a lot of places, 10 to 20 dBs by using this filter to eliminate the higher frequencies. You know, after the Distortion Plus, I think in history, the rat might have come after that and the, the innovation beyond the Distortion Plus with this, it, it put that filter in to get rid of these higher frequency components where originally people would be using it with a graphic equalizer such as a 10 band like Randy Rhodes is a 6 band but Randy Rhodes used a 10 band in this uh, to drive his amp so we can do some more interesting things as well so let's take the rat out of the equation now because I, I just wanted to show you that it has a filter and I want to concentrate on three, these three pedals because this is uh, a gain stage that I want to use for one of my clean amps and what I'd like to do is use this to create the distortion the hard clipper but remember it's always going to be clipped at the forward voltage of the clipping diodes so we're not going to get much more voltage out of it and maybe I want to drive an, a clean amp a little harder so what the purpose of this guy is to put it back into its regular mode and take some of the gain out is for this to be another amplifier stage the difference a lot between a clean amp and a dirty amp is there's more stages in a dirty amp there's also hard clippers in a dirty amp and there's also cold clipping however in this case i want to do this this and then use this to try and get me uh get a nice peak Get a nice peak signal. And you can see now I've got rid of some of the laws. And in fact, I can put this switch in and get some of the rid of, rid of some of the laws as well. This is a low cut. And now you can see I've got this nice curve here of peaks around 800, 800 hertz to, to a, a kilohertz. So why don't I plug the guitar in now into a clean amp, Fender amp, and uh, see what kind of gain and distortion profile we can get. I've got the three pedals hooked up now. Distortion Plus, Micro Amp and the six band graphic equalizer. These two are high headroom. Gorgeous clean sound. Let's add a bit of clean gain. Super high headroom clean gain. So you can see that's creating a lot of nice. of nice harmonics and then just let's uh, switch in the diodes so we get immediate drop and so we have to crank this up to get the harmonics so not so impressive and when driving a clean amp, fantastic on a JCM 800 though. Uh, let's put this guy in. So about 10 million more harmonics in that signal. Very nice distortion. a bit fizzy and that's where this guy's going to come in but also i just want to use this a little bit that's a low cut in and just to drive it a bit more
Well, I like that. Now let's use our EQ, take out some of that low E string. And then take the fizz out and boost the mids. That's fantastic. That's going to be a gain stage on my board. I'll do a switcher so I can switch in all three and just have that as something that I can use to do high gain in a low gain high headroom amplifier. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>